Hey, how's everybody doing? I uh, appreciate the alarm earlier. I, I'm on the East Coast, and I've been up since like 3 a.m. East Coast time, so John's alarm going off is to keep me awake. If I seem a little loopy, it's probably because I am. Uh, so, go on to the next slide. Uh, basically, our usage and history, I guess, with glassfish, we kind of have to look back a little bit. Uh, I don't want to bore you too much of the details, but ESPN, we run hundreds of web applications uh, across you know, hundreds of servers. Uh, everything at ESPN, for historical reasons, because mostly out of necessity, uh, was written on custom frameworks. It's all Java-based, but pretty much up and down the stack, from like our connection pooling all the way to the templating language. Uh, if I told you what we used, you never ever heard of it because it's something that either Disney, which owns ESPN, <coughs> excuse me, or ESPN ourselves wrote. There was a good reason they wrote it at the time. It was good stuff. Uh, Tomcat didn't exist, you know. JSP didn't really exist. A lot of stuff. Java was brand new. We're talking like the 1.1, 1.2 days. Uh, but it's 2000, 21st century. We're the worldwide leader in sports, not technology. Doesn't really make sense for us to have our own server container anymore, especially since it's like three revs out of date and nobody supports it. Uh, so a few years back, we decided, yeah, let's get off of this server container we're using. There's some pretty good stuff out there. You know, Tomcat was an obvious uh, one, but we're like, we're going to make this big effort to move hundreds of web apps, let's do some due diligence and see what other options we have. And uh, we tested all the, you know, all the likely suspects, I won't name any of the other ones by name, but at the end of the day what we found out was, you know, latency and, you know, response time of our applications didn't really vary too much from server to server, but uh, as some of the other people mentioned, and I have on one of my other slides, the concurrency and the scalability with Grizzly just literally in some cases, like our applications went from a hundred requests a second, they'd start dying to, we couldn't kill them with our with our $2 million load test appliance. So definitely it just was, you know, ESPN were all about like scaling and just handling massive amounts of traffic. So to be able to just switch to a different server container and suddenly our, 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 uh, our number of concurrent users we can support goes up 30, 40, 50, 200%. That was a huge win for us. Um, we're like, and plus we can use all this E stuff. Everybody always said E is slow, you know, we can't, but we, we wanted to standardize on all these, you know, best of breed open source technologies, get away from these things we were doing that, you know, they made sense when they started writing our own server container maybe, but it doesn't anymore. So let's standardize on what the rest of the industry is doing. Uh, and as other people alluded to, you know, there's other things like Spring and things like that, but we're already going to use this server container. It already comes with all these other features in the E part of the, t uh, of the container. Let's see if we can use those. So I'll talk a little bit more uh, about how we're using those other features, I guess. We go to the next slide. So we're in the process, actually. We started, even though we're at .com, we kind of move slowly sometimes, just because I don't know why. Uh, but <laughs> we have a lot of applications, I guess, as part of it. But uh, we, the first application we piloted on Glassfish was probably two and a half years ago. I don't know. Do you have any, I'm going to assume everybody uses ESPN.com. I know you all love sports, but how many people actually like have used our personalization system where you like pick your favorite teams? Anybody? All right, so a few people. All right, so that was the, the first uh, service, the first application we migrated to Glassfish. Uh, and our front page, people were talking about traffic and how much Glassfish could handle some of the other speakers. And our front page gets, like, I can't really, marketing would, come answer me if I said actually the numbers, but it's like tens of thousands of requests per second, and you do the math over an entire day, on average you're talking about tens of millions of requests. A lot of that is cash though, I mean we can't possibly serve that, we'd have to have you know Amazon's whole cloud just to power that front page alone. So we cash that, page cash that a lot historically. When you start talking about personalization, it's like, well, we can't really page cash that, so how do you do that? Uh, and Basically, we had some pretty serious requirements for that, and we're like, if Glassfish can handle this, it'll handle any of our other applications that don't process nearly as much traffic. Uh, so basically, the goal was to have a single instance of this personalization application be able to handle at least 3,000 requests a second and have a response time of less than 10 milliseconds. And that was basically just so we could keep the, the front page running and not like have personalization take down the whole site, you know? and that's... We we're, we were pretty impressed with that. So, I mean, we did, we did a little bit of tuning. Uh, one of the things people mentioned, like the monitoring consoles and maybe getting a nicer front end on that. But one thing we really found to be great was uh, the JMX. Like, there's so much stuff instrumented in JMX that uh, our, our system operations team, they loved it because they can monitor all the stuff they didn't have. And we can see, you know, if, an, 
if a server's tanking, like before we're like, I don't know, I'll just restart it, who knows what's going on, I hope it gets better. Uh, now we're actually able to go in there, we created some monitoring templates to see like, because the threads are all exposed, all your HTTP threads are exposed in Glassfish, let's go look at what template it's running. Oh, that's, I wrote that template, that's why it's tanking the server, you know, that kind of thing. So it's really helpful to identify issues like that. Uh, so, some of the typical things, I guess, Java EE wise, we're you know switching from that again, a homegrown messaging service uh, framework that was created to use MDBs and JMS. So all of the scores that you see on ESPN.com, a lot of which actually people at work even don't believe me. I was told this by my coworkers when I started. Like, the scores sometimes show up on .com before they show up on your TV. That's all going through JMS, and for the most part, message driven beans at this point we're standardizing on that technology. Uh, so we're trying to get uh, decoupling, so we'll talk a little bit on another slide of uh, trying to, you know, we have so many services and uh, other people have talked about mobile and all the proliferation of mobile devices and a lot of clients that aren't necessarily Java based anymore. Uh, so we're trying to basically, you know, decouple our data services from who's building the page, right? So ESPN's mission statement, you know, is serve the fan anywhere, anytime. And in technology, we're like on any device because it's getting to be more and more that we need to do REST, and Jack's RS has been great for that. Uh, we try to do it again, or fall back into our old habits of, let's write our own framework to do this, and then we start seeing, you know, it's probably a lot easier if we use something like Jack's RS, so that's been nice. Uh, we're actually still running on Glassfish 2.1. That's primarily because we moved data centers, so we moved our whole Disney's entire data center moved recently in the whole year, everybody was dealing with that, so we're prototyping our new, all our new development we're doing in dev, uh, using CDI and a lot of the nice new features, but we have, we're gonna be rolling that out to production pretty shortly. You go to the next slide. So what worked? People already talked about Grizzly. Uh, pretty much, I think I touched on all those points already. Uh, you know, the JMX stuff is great, being able to monitor that. Uh, and the community support has been pretty good, I think, and just in terms of the different, if you, you know, of the EE containers we tested, like, as bad as people, and actually used to work at Sun five years ago and I wrote some of that admin console that everyone's ripping. <laughs> I don't take it personally because I know it really hasn't been touched since I left Sun five or six years ago, but that's like, if you look at JBoss's admin console or at least circa a couple years ago, it was like, holy, it looked like, you know, color TV versus black and white. So it has its issues, but, uh, but still, a little plug for my password. Anyway, so we can go on. I think I talked about a lot of the good stuff we had. Scalability was huge for us. Go to the next slide. All right, so the first bullet, you're probably, some of you might be like, well, you're running on Windows, there's your problem. And yeah, if I could change that, I would. But uh, one of the issues we had, really the only issue that we had was that, I, I guess, like a lot of people mentioned, once the thing was up and running, it's great, it never goes down. We, had, we used to have a service, like our NHL service, for whatever reason, just run out of memory or die, and we just restarted. It was almost like we 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 just had a cron job to restart this thing every couple of days just to avoid it crashing. We switched to Glassfish. We didn't really fix our own code, which is probably causing some sort of problem, or maybe it was just a server container. But uh, now it doesn't crash anymore. And just so things like that were great. Uh, but one of the issues we did have was actually getting things to restart sometimes. So because of the way Windows services work and how uh, we found like there's a there's some, one of the open source contributions I think was somebody that gave back a tool to like make a Windows service out of a Glassfish instance. But the problem we found is that there's a disconnect because all this Windows service actually, the wrapper actually does is, like issue an AS admin command and sometimes things get orphaned or I'm not a good developer and my thing runs out of memory and now the AS admin stop command doesn't work because that JVM is toast because I forgot to deallocate something or whatever, I had an endless loop. Uh, so we had to do some work around that to basically harden it. So when we did S service control stop, SC stop, uh, it actually really killed the service. So uh, configuration management, we've been trying to leverage a lot of container managed resource stuff. It's not really, I guess, a, uh, a problem per se with Glassfish, but I'd be curious to hear like if people have strategies around how they're doing things like that. So I mentioned we have like more than, we have some pretty complex systems, but mostly one of our biggest issues that uh, ESPN is just managing, you know, we cover everything from the obvious big sports to, you know, international sports now to rodeo and other things that you're like, nobody's looking at that. Well, I mean, somebody, I 
shouldn't say that actually, but <laughs> rodeo is important. We definitely want to cover that, but it does complicate my life because we have hundreds of services to cover, right? So we're talking, we have hundreds of services, talking to tons of databases and multiple backend systems, just managing that. So like simple things like we have a content system and when a password changes to get to that content system, now we have to roll out the configuration. So a lot of times we joke like, we don't write Java code, we just like can manage XML configs. So we're trying to leverage like OSGI seemed like a promising thing in that, but whenever I like talk to my developers about OSGI, they want to punch me in the face because they're like, it's what it's like a foreign language. And I like HK2, okay, but when you have to create like an abstraction layer within the first year or two of actually introducing this new thing, that's kind of an indictment of that. I, I, so anyway, that's something of an area where it seems like We'd like to try and see if we can figure out a solution and maybe work with the community and just to manage complexity and manage different services. And it's just getting worse and worse, you know, as we have these more decoupled RESTful services in terms of who's talking to what. Uh, one of the big things, I guess, we are, again, our service operations team, for better or worse, I can't touch anything in production. Like, I always tell them I want to have an admin account and prod so I can just do whatever I want, but for some reason they don't want me to do that. So we have to actually go through another team. Uh, and they, for again, for reasons I don't know, they tend to want to have like actual support to be able to call somebody. We've never actually had it. One of the issues we have is just in terms of like, we probably part of it was because we talked to Oracle right after the merge happened with Sun, and just in terms of what's the support model, you know, how does that work? It's great for an open source community, but if we want, you know, if we want official support, how do we do that? Who do we talk to? What does it cost? You know, that's that. That was one of the areas where it didn't seem clear from even the sales team at the time. Again, this was probably 18 months ago. Like, didn't seem like it was there was a clear story on that. So, and again, cloud stuff. We're definitely interested in leveraging that. I think a lot, like a lot of places, you know, we everybody's like, oh, cloud, great, yeah, we want to do that. But how do you make this stuff? You know, how do you keep the lights on? How do you keep getting paid while while you you know migrate your stuff to a cloud environment, and public versus private, and the hybrid model? I think is where we're going. So. So, good stuff. I mean, I just wanted to come and tell you guys about my experience. I think it's a great product and uh, scalability was, again, a huge thing. If, if that's at all a concern for you guys, people should look at it. I think in terms of NIO, other people mentioned it. Was, I think it was on almost every set of slides. So. But thanks a lot.